Hello folks, Jason Christman here, JC's Bees. Right off the bat, I'd like to take a minute and discuss a video I released, uh, I believe mid-February. The video is based on printing 3D objects for beekeeping. And in that video, I discussed these 3D printed Nikot cup holders. There's been a little flaw in the design, and I want to talk about that real quick. Okay, so here's the issue. When you take the Nikot cup and you push it down into the 3D printed cup holder, over a period of time, this cup holder squeezing on this cup pushes it up and out and it actually pops completely out. Um, I noticed this when I set up my frame and I had to go back through and push some down. But then after I grafted and returned the following day to move my grafts to the cell finisher, 85% um, of the cups were laying on the bottom of the hive. So to fix this, Matt has tweaked the design and made some changes so that the Nikot cup does not pop out. Um, he has yet to update Thingiverse, um, the website where you 3D print these, but that will be happening soon. So keep an eye on that. When Matt gets a chance to update that, you'll be able to go in and get these modified cups. I would also like to add, and I don't know, even know if, uh, if these ones are listed on Thingiverse, but these solid plastic cups that Matt made, um, I have not seen them pop the Nikot cup. So these ones here work very well. Um, I like these ones probably almost better than this design now. Now that I've seen the flaw and uh, I've played with this one a little bit, this one seems to be the better option, but we'll see what happens when Matt uh, gets this corrected. Maybe this will be the option that I like. So get Matt some time to get this uh, problem updated on the website, and uh, I'm sure at his earliest convenience, he'll take the time to do that. I know a lot of beekeepers were very excited um, about this cup holder, so uh, give him some time, he'll get it done. And uh, Matt, to you, we appreciate your efforts, and I greatly appreciate you sending me these samples to test out. I kind of enjoy trying these new beekeeping items, just to see, you know, do they work, do they not work, what, what can we improve and uh, fix to make them better. So thanks for that, Matt. Um, since this occurred, I switched to uh, a complete Nikot setup for my queen rearing. Um, I have used JZBZs this year, but uh, I think I'm going to switch out to the Nikot cups and uh, until Matt gets me some updated versions of these. Or I could use this uh, solid plastic one, which I do like, and the hair roller cage slides right on. But I have a whole bunch of the Nikot cups, the full setup, so right now I actually have uh, a grafting frame fully set up in Nikot um, and my cell finisher. And that'll be ready, I believe, the beginning of the week. So hopefully the weather permits. Um, speaking of weather, yep, it's Wednesday. You got rain coming tomorrow. If you remember last week, I mentioned that we've had uh, precipitation since November on Thursday or Friday, sometimes both. Um, and it's still holding true. We got storms coming in tomorrow. I believe they're gonna last until Friday morning and then let up. So getting a little bit better. Um, we're not involving all of Friday in rain, so that's a big thumbs up. Um, it's also a big thumbs up because uh, we get to mow this weekend. Just bought a new mower. Um, have yet to do the first mowing of the year, in which it doesn't bother me. The only thing I really don't like about the tall grass is when I walk out here in the bee yard um, and your feet and your shoes get all wet. I'm not a big fan of that. So for that reason, I will be glad to mow. But, uh, you know, I kind of have a little thing I do here. And uh, we've got separate yards. we got a yard over here on this side of the house. we got a yard over here and a yard on the back side of the house. So I like to rotate my mowing. That way there's always something in bloom in the yard for the bees, whether it's dandelions or clover. So, you know, I may mow this one this week and not this one over here and let it grow until the following week. Then the following week I'll mow that one and not this one. It's just how I am. I know the neighbors think I'm weird and they think I ought to get to more of a normal schedule with my mowing. But you know what? Don't look over here if you don't like it. 
Uh, I'm a beekeeper and uh, I'm going to do what is best for my bees and uh, you know it's kind of helping my grass at the same time. Um, the farmer in me knows that when you let the grass grow the roots are also growing so when you get to the dry time of the year um, your roots are deep enough that they're able to get some moisture so your grass doesn't die. But when you mow it every week and your grass is only this tall year round your roots aren't getting any deeper and uh, you're surely not helping your lawn any and it's probably going to turn brown when the when the season goes dry so keep that in mind um, let your grass grow a little bit ain't going to hurt nothing except for your neighbor's feelings so this week i made a lot of splits um, actually two of the colonies that i split um, one was a they were both 10 frames um, one was a deep and a medium the other one was two deeps. From those two colonies, I got, I think it was 10 splits. So very, very impressed with that. And uh, I hope to make more splits next week. So if everything lines up, I'll be able to make that happen. And then I also need to graft again. So it's, it's been very, very busy um, splitting, grafting, moving the grafting frame from the cell starter to the finisher and then going back out and removing the cells and, and taking them in and putting them in my incubator. If you would like to know more about raising queens or queen rearing, check out my queen rearing series and I'm gonna link that up here in the corner. Now I will tell you, there is a lot of work involved in queen rearing and it's, it's very time demanding. So if you don't have time, don't waste your time. Don't even think about trying to raise your own queens because when it comes to certain days you have to be there and if you're not there you're just wasting time so today what we're going to talk about is i just made these splits and uh, i actually ran out of hive feeders so i did a little bit of research just to see what i could come up with on my own for a feeder and i knew this but it didn't come to me when i was trying to think of it uh, ziploc baggies um, you lay them on top of the frames cut a couple slits in them and you've got an instant feeder so I'm going to show you how to do that today and uh, maybe it'll help you out in case you don't have feeders and um, maybe it'll just be a backup idea you throw in your back pocket in case you need it. So what I'd like to do now is just go ahead and dive right into uh, Ziploc baggy feeders. Let's check it out. Okay, so to begin, I've got a little bit of uh, sugar syrup mixed up in this bucket at one to one ratio. I've got my Ziploc bags in which I went ahead and got the Avengers um, Ziploc bags. I figured, you know, this has got to help the bees having superheroes on the bags. I mean, that's got to make them stronger, right? So this is what I uh, decided to go with. It was either this or Frozen, and I didn't see Frozen being uh, that appreciated in my hives. So we're going with Avengers. Um, I've also got a handy dandy McDonald's cup and uh, this is not necessarily needed um, a McDonald's cup but some cup of some sort is going to be needed to get the syrup into the baggies I've also got a very sharp razor blade which we will be using to make our slices So I'm going to hold the baggie over top of the bucket and pour in my syrup. And I'm only going to do about a little less than half of a sandwich baggie. And I'm also going to let some of this air escape. So I'm going to lay it down on its side somewhat, let the air come out, and then I'm going to lock it. So there we go. We've got the first one made up. When it lays in the hive, it'll look something like that. Now, the important part here is where you make your cuts. You wanna try and stay at least an inch and a half from the edges. So what I recommend you do is you come in about an inch and a half, two inches, start cutting here, and come over to about the same distance from the other side. Then come down an inch, maybe two, and do the same thing here, and then another one here. So I'm going to make up a few of these and uh, we'll get them on these uh, splits that I just made that are a couple frames of bees. 
and we'll see how they enjoy it. Okay, so what you're looking at is four wax coated uh, cardboard nukes. And these are just for a temporary use. They will eventually be transferred into wooden boxes. But for now, they work very good for making splits and I do not have to use up all of my wooden wear. What you see on top of that is a, a sheet of one inch styrofoam um, insulation board. Um, there's actually a few sheets on this stack. Um, these are my surplus that it pieces that I have left. But all the other wax coated nukes in this bee yard only have the one. Um, and what that's for is to keep any rain and weather off of the wax coated nuke. Now sure, being wax coated, they can handle the weather on their own. But the styrofoam is going to prolong their life. So what I want to do now is I want to open them up and go through them and uh, add these uh, baggy feeders. Um, these are really super light splits. Um, I know some of them are two frames, some of them are only a frame. It just depended on the amount of brood on that frame. Um, I have queen cells about to uh, emerge in my incubator and they will soon be added to these splits. But for now, they need fed. So let's get in there and do that. Now I am working without any smoke, without any face protection, no veil, um, and that's just because these are extremely weak splits. Um, I feel pretty confident in going in there without getting stung. Um, probably because I'm recording, that won't be the case, but we'll soon find out. So what you want to do is you want to take your baggie feeder and lay it right across the top of the frames and then make the cuts as I explained, as you will see me do. But what I'm going to do to allow some more space is take a couple pieces of uh, maybe a tree limb or something, lay a piece here, lay a piece here, and put the lid back on. You could also add your feeding ring that you used over winter for dry sugar feeding to allow this space, but I think that might be a little bit much. And with this lid having this uh, extra depth, this tree limb isn't going to keep it from going on all the way. So that'll be good. What I'm going to do now, break this piece in half, I'm going to lay a part of it here, and I'm going to lay a part of it here. Now when I put the lid back on, the bees can easily get over here to this serp and uh, figure out what's going on. Now you do want to make sure that the bees are able to ax, uh, you do want to make sure that this baggie is coming over onto the frame that the bees are on. Otherwise they're not going to go uh, investigate to find out where the serp's coming from. Now here's the important part. When I put this styrofoam back on, I have to put the heavy weights that I had on top of the styrofoam to keep it from blowing away back in the same place. Why is that? Well, if the bees are using those objects, those weights, or the rock, and this hive lid, um, as markers for orientation flights, if I put them in the wrong place, they could drift to the wrong colony. So, for that reason, I want to put the 10 frame hive cover, garden hive cover, right here. And I want to put the brick right there where the mark is for it. So there we go, pretty simple, huh? Uh, only took a few minutes. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of expense in feeders. And uh, the bees are able to get some syrup now just what we needed for them to start uh, building up. Now granted, this is not my go-to option for a feeder. I really like the Saracel Top High feeders, but my go-to is probably still the frame feeder or division board feeder. Um, I really like them. They're hard to beat and uh, they work really well if you set them up correctly. Um, the floats that come with those aren't always the greatest, and I found sometimes if you just take a handful of grass and drop it in there on top of the sugar syrup, that alone acts as a decent float. But I've got a video 
um, of what I do for floats and I'm going to link it over here at the side as well. So if that's something you're interested in on how to improve your floats and your frame feeders, make sure you check that out. Um, drowning rate is uh, really, really low once you make this update. So it's worth your time. So besides these splits, I'm not really doing any feeding. There's definitely enough nectar flow um, with this rain we've been having weekly and uh, all the stuff in bloom. Now I have observed one new plant in bloom this week and that's, that's it, that's all I have for you. And that is honeysuckle. Um, the weird thing about honeysuckle is, and I don't see it a whole lot, but most of the time the flowers are either white or yellow. But I've seen a couple uh, honeysuckle bushes that are pink. I don't really understand the reasoning for that. Is it a mineral or something in the dirt or the soil that's the plants absorbing that's making this pink? I'm not sure. If you know, please enlighten me. Share it with everybody. We would welcome the knowledge. But besides that, that's really the only thing different that I'm seeing uh, come along this week as far as blooms or nectar sources. Um, still got dandelions, uh, the red bud trees are almost done, the petals have all but fallen off, and we're starting to get leaves on the trees now. So that is what it is. Um, so I hope this video's uh, helped you out, and if it has, you'll throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for all the other beekeepers to find. And if you haven't taken time to subscribe, please do so, and make sure you click on the little bell so that you can get notified when I release new videos. I would like to also add that if you go over to my Patreon page, for just $5 a month, you can get a, a monthly beekeeping checklist. And that's gonna change monthly um, according to what I am doing in my aviary. Now I'm trying to make this work regardless which region or area you live in. So, um, if you do go and opt in on this, please give me some feedback so that over time, we can make this the very best checklist available on the internet. That would be my goal. Uh, I wanna help as many of you out as I can, but at the same time, I can't just donate all my time to giving stuff away. So $5 a month, that's all I'm asking. And with that $5, you also get some other perks. And I encourage you, go over my Patreon page and check it out. Um, I'd appreciate it, and uh, I think you appreciate the information I'm sharing with you, so it'd work out good for everybody. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.